All right, so on the first step, we're installing the gantry to the base. We're gonna need this packet of bolts. And so what we're gonna do is make sure that our wiring here is not twisted up too bad or is where it wants to be. Okay, there we go, that's better. So yeah, just make sure your wires are not being all twisted. And we're literally gonna set it down right here. And there's one, two, three, four, five points that we'll have to secure the gantry down to the base. And I really like how they thought about the installation process and included this useful driver. So yeah, there's three here. And I'm just gonna start them for now because we need to move it around maybe here and there. And you guys can see there's two on the back. And then one, it's kind of harder to see, but it's underneath the bed right over here. So now that we got all of them started, we can go ahead and tighten them up. So we're gonna snug this up really good. And we can actually use our little wrench for leverage if we wanna get them you know, nice and tight. All right, so yeah, now our gantry is connected to the base. So for the next part, they want us to install the metal handle on top, and that's this guy here, and it goes right here. Now we do need to lower the x-axis or the z, and if you guys can see, we got a lead screw here, so if we just grab it by the coupler, we can turn it to go up and down. Make some room here so we can get to the handle. So same bolts out of the pack, and we'll need two of them. Start one and the other, and there we go. And now we have a handle that we can grab the printer by and move it around. So yeah, so far, pretty simple. So for the next part, they want us to connect the Z, which is right here, and the wires just stick it up, and it does have a little Z on it, and that's our motor for the Z axis. So yeah, just need to plug that in. The next step will be installing the spool holder, which is also quite simple. It goes here on the side of the printer and it's pretty much assembled. So we just got to line it up with these two threads. So it does kind of lean back. Go ahead and snug it up. So for the next part, we got to install the build plate, but the one they're showing here is the glass and we have the PEI sheet and that's pretty much it for the assembly. So let's go ahead and install our build plate. So separating them apart, we can see that this is the magnetic part and it's like a big sticker that we got to peel here and then we're going to put it on the aluminum heated bed. Now there is a little protector here and you could choose to take this off or leave it. Doesn't really matter. Mine looks like it's pretty good and flat and everything's nice. Now if you have some kind of wrinkles or it's peeling you might as well take it off but you know if it's perfect you can leave it and I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this to that now normally I'm not very good with this kind of stuff so if you're not either be very careful because you get only one try so I'm just gonna peel it on one corner and then lay it down and I'm making sure that it's square everywhere but once I'm pretty confident I got it reasonably straight I'm just gonna start peeling the whole thing underneath kind of laying it flat where it needs to go. So be very careful here and just take your time. So since this is so thick, it's not that hard, obviously, but you know, you just want to line it up as close as possible and kind of evenly let it set in from one end to the other. All right, well, I think we did a pretty good job. And now our PEI sheet should just magnetize right on top of it. So it kind of jumps around here and there, but it does line up and yeah, very cool to have this PI option for this printer. I definitely like that. So I'm not sure if I skipped a step or what, but we haven't did anything here. So it looks like that if you do want to use the filament detector, it's kind of built in here on the side. You're going to have to go through with your filament kind of feeding like this and then through the tube. Now this is a direct drive extruder. The part that's unfortunate because it's direct drive, you know, you kind of benefit of not having any tubes, but because this printer is so small, you know, it's not really a great option to mount on top. You can probably mount a spool holder up here somewhere if you wanted to instead of this handle, kind of like a DIY upgrade. And then you can feed straight down into that. But if you want to use it the way they intended it, or at least what it feels like what's intended here is that we need to remove this PTF tubing here piece that guides and then we're going to insert this one instead just like that and now our filament will feed through the detector and then into the hot end or the extruder so again looks like right off the bat or the factory setup here we are already given options to you know upgrade this thing which is kind of cool all right so yeah let's take a closer look at this thing and so far i'm pretty impressed with what i see especially for being a budget printer so we'll start here on top we got a little handle that we installed Everything is metal here. You can see our lead screw. It does have a bearing on top. So let's go to the back. You guys can see going down to our brass bushing, then eventually down to our Z-axis motor with the coupler and it's black. So here we have our X-axis connection that goes out like an arm. And this is all metal. Our X-axis motor. This is the filament detector. So our filament will come out of the spool 
and then into the detector through this tube and then out into the hot end. So looking at the back of the direct drive extruder, we can see the motor and it's all very well integrated, at least very cleanly. And you guys probably notice here maybe, we are rolling on metal rails. Instead of having those plastic rollers that are V-channeled, this is more like a linear rail style roller type. So yeah, very nice and I definitely prefer this because it's very smooth. If it's done right, it's definitely better than those plastic rollers. So not too much to see here. Underneath, we do see the nozzle though, with the silicone heat sock on the heater block. So going down to the very bottom, not much here, just some venting. And then we've got our main wire coming out to the bed. And another one here going to the x-axis. The spool holder mounts here. You guys can see where we mounted all our bolts to hold the upper portion. Under the bed, we can see where our y-axis motor is. And it kind of rolls on these idler pulleys and we have the belt that connects to the bed. Again, the same kind of channel for the Y-axis. We got the Y-axis end stop switch. Going back to the front, here we can see a cover with our QR code. And here's our X-axis end stop switch. And we can see how that works right there. Underneath that, we got the Z-axis end stop switch, which goes down and hits this adjustment here. And you can turn this to go lower or higher to offset it. So let's go ahead and preset it and go all the way down. And when it hits that switch, it's gonna click. There we go, and we can see about how high we are off the bill plate. So that looks like about right. And our springs are somewhat tightened. So I think we do have to go down on this a little bit, but we'll do that when we level the bed. So yeah, you guys can see everything is built very well on this printer. So let's go back to the top here and look at the hot end assembly. So we got the heat brake fan here, it looks like. And it looks like it has a multi-purpose of cooling the extruder down and also the heat brake itself, which is right behind there. You can't really see it, but yeah, very interesting design. And we can see our extruder arm here where we can release it so we can feed the filament through. We got a very large blower fan and this is for the parts cooling. And there is a 3D printed duct that comes out right there underneath the nozzle. And going to this side of the nozzle and the heat block there. So, and we got our extruder motor. So at the end of the X axis, we do have a tensioner for the belt. And it's this little twisty thing, which is really nice. Just be careful not to over tighten it. Mine's I think a little tight right now, but yeah, we can adjust that as we need it. And you wanna be, you know, semi-tight, but not too tight. We do have quite a lot of mass moving here with the motor, so a little tighter is better. All right, now we go down to the bill plate that we installed, which is this PEI sheet. Very nice, and it comes right off. It's just magnetic. So we do have a volume of 180 by 180 and 180 tall, which is a really good size for how small this printer is. Yeah, I do feel like most people would be more than happy with something this small of a form factor and the amount it could print. All right, so let's go underneath here. So the metal part, this aluminum, is the heated bed. And then underneath, maybe you guys can see here, we have a insulation pad, which is really cool. Even though this bed is small, it's nice to see that they put that there because it should heat up really quick. We do have adjustable knobs with springs on all four corners and we'll be using those in a second to level the bed and our bed frame there riding on the steel rollers you guys can see so yeah very nicely built again i love these rails we got a little end cap here and i'm expecting to see great print quality because of this so on the very top we've got a screen that's kind of just pointing up vertically so yeah it's not very good to look at it probably from an angle like this which is fine when you're looking down at it on the desk and there's a protector let's go ahead and peel that Overall looks nice and clean. So going down from there, we got the micro SD card port, a USB port, and this is where you're gonna use that blue cable to connect to the computer, and a regular USB port for like a thumb drive or even that adapter you could probably use here with the micro SD card. So yeah, they give you quite a few options here to connect. So on this side, we got the Crux One logo. Going to the left, not too much here, but to the right, we got our on and off switch here right on the front. And that's our power input port, and it is fused. And if we keep going this way, there's actually quite an important thing that we got to look at here. And this is our voltage selection. So you guys can see it says 220 and 110. And there's a switch in there. It's kind of like a black switch pointing down. And you got to click that to your voltage. Yeah, depending on where you live, you're going to toggle it to the left for 220 and right for 110. So mine is toggled correctly to the 110. And we do have four rubber squishy feet on each corner. So yeah, guys, overall, it looks like a pretty cool little printer. And I'm excited to power it on, preheat it, and level the bed. So let's go ahead and plug our power cord in. And that is here on the side, which is pretty convenient here up front. All right, so it looks like we've got a boot up. And you guys probably won't see this well because of the 
reflections but yeah it made a little sound there and booted up so we're gonna look at the menu but I'm gonna go ahead and click on tools preheat so hitting right in the middle preheats the bed to 60 and 200 on the nozzle and you can also individually do it let's go to manual and this is where we're gonna home the printer all right so that was the Y the X and the Z coming down And look at that, everything's working perfectly. And it is preheating, it's already pretty hot, wow. Yeah, with this thing being so little and insulated, it's gonna heat up real quick. So the bed is at 55 and yeah, it's almost at 60. All right, hopefully you guys can see that, but yeah, it looks like the screen actually out of turns off or dims. And you can see, just touch it and powers back on. And hopefully you can see that there's a little bit of reflection, but so let's go back to the main menu. So this is what you see when you first start. We got system tools and print. So system is going to be about the printer. We got status, info, a language. Let's choose the different languages, and then reset to default. So tools is going to be where everything, like if we click on manual, you can see here we can move individual axes and also home the printer. And this is what I pushed here right in the middle. And here on the bottom, you can adjust how much it moves from 0.1 to 1 and 10 millimeters at a time. Let's go back. We got preheat, push either plus or minus, but to preheat straight to 60 and 200, you just click right on it, right on the numbers like that. So you can see that if I click on it, it goes back to zero. So yeah, that's really nice. And then we have the level button. And here it asks us to choose the kind of level which we only have manual available for this model. It's going to give us five points that we can go to and it's actually out of homing right now. So we're going to click these circles here to go to that part of the bed and we're about to go through this and level the bed. But if we go back, we've got the last thing which is print and that's going to read our micro SD card or thumb drive to access the files. So yeah, pretty small screen, but quite intuitive and works pretty well. All right, so let's go ahead and level the bed. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to see how low our nozzle goes before it hits the build plate. And as you can see, maybe there's still a gap there between the nozzle. Also, we want to check our springs to see if they're, you know, compressed. The way I like to do it is compress them pretty much all the way down until they're feeling some resistance. And now we can see we got a pretty large gap under there. So we can go ahead and compress this spring here to go lower on the Z-axis switch. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up. So this might not tighten too much depending on how much compression it has left. Uh, let's see about how far it goes down now. Okay, so pretty good. Maybe I'll go a little more. And I think that should be all right because we do need to release these, you know, a good amount. So basically what we're trying to do is tighten everything up. So, you know, the tighter these springs are on the bed, the less chance they have of getting bumped off. And plus we are adding a little bit of volume to our Z height as we're, you know, compressing down more. So on the screen, we're going to tap on tools, level, like you guys saw, manual. And it's going to prompt up the five points. And we'll just click on the first point. And you do want to make sure that you are preheated on the bed and the nozzle. So let's go ahead and use this little paper they included to do the gap. And what we're doing is we're just going to adjust the bed until our nozzle kind of has a slight drag on the paper here. Oh, there we go. So now we're going to go to the next spot. Which is this corner here. Alright, just a little drag. And we're just going to go around and around the four corners. until we get them perfect. So since this is a pretty small size bed, it shouldn't be too hard. And you definitely want to go, you know, a few times. But here, just on my second try, I'm already pretty close. So yeah, you just want a slight drag between the nozzle and the bed. So yeah, we're really close now. And this is our third run. And I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and click the middle. That feels pretty much perfect. So if you do need to go down a little, let's say it's too tight for some reason, just turn each knob just a little bit, the same on four corners, and you know, the whole thing will go down just slightly. Or if it's too loose, and you wanna go up a little, you can do that. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the extent of leveling the build plate. So if we go back, it's gonna out of home, and we're done with the bed leveling. All right, so let's install some filament, and I'm just going to use a roll that I have. This is a full-size spool, but it is coming to an end. Let's see how well this works. So yeah, just going to sit on the spool holder, and then we're going to go through the filament detector here on the side, and then through the PTFE tubing, and then down into the extruder. So what we want to do is push on this lever to release it, and as I do that, I'm going to push it through, and it should eventually be coming out the other end, as you guys can see there. 
yeah, it just goes through here. And then we press on this lever to release the tension on the gear so we can get through into the hot end and then we purged it by pushing it through. Now, I don't think, well, actually, no, we do have extruder controls here under the manual menu. So we can go ahead and see if we can just push that with the extruder and sure enough, we can. So if you do get, you know, close into here, you can just push the extruder down and it'll push it the rest of the way. So. All right, well, I think we're pretty much ready to print. We leveled the bed, we ran our filament through. Let's grab our micro SD card which by the way is an eight gig and we can plug it in here or you can just plug the adapter into the USB port and it should work either way. So I'm gonna click on print and you guys can't see this and there is a file in there and click on test models and there is a few G codes included. Click on the calibration cube and we'll start with that one. We're gonna look at the uh, printing menu here in a second guys. So it is preheating 200 on the nozzle and 60 on the bed and there it goes. So let's hope our offset is just right and it looks pretty good to me okay so it is purging there on the side but yeah on the top we got the file name and then the coordinates x y and z the bed temperature and the target the speed that's currently going at so it's like 30 right now the nozzle temperature and the target the time passed and time left 46 minutes with a progress bar down here of how much has been completed which is six percent and then we got a pause stop and Okay, yeah, so we can adjust the temperature of the bed, the nozzle, and also we do have a z-axis offset. Look at that. So you can adjust it up and down on the fly, which is really nice to see. But yeah, pretty much all of the uh, options here and everything's laid out pretty well. And the screen does look a lot better when you look at it straight down. We're kind of looking at it at an angle. 